Okay, I think all of us are here already. Please all rise for the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, once again, welcome and good morning, St. Anthony students. So, have you all eaten your breakfast this morning? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you have a nice breakfast. I hope all of you have eaten their breakfast because it's not good that you go to school with an empty stomach. So, yes? All right. Anyway, are you ready for today's session? Mm-hmm, very good. So let me just present to you our learning objectives. So at the end of the discussion, 90% of the students are expected to A, identify various tools needed in nailing techniques. B, recognize the different theories in nailing process. C, choose the best nailing techniques in various situations. And D, value the importance of acquiring basic knowledge of nailing techniques. So I hope all of you will participate and cooperate with our discussion today so that we can able to achieve this within the given hours we have. Is that all right? Okay. So here our topic for today is all about nailing techniques. So, have you all experienced driving a nail? Please raise your hand if, for those who say yes. Mm-hmm. All right, I can see that there are many of us already know how to drive a nail. Very impressive. So, um, can anyone then here share their brief experience of their first encounter driving a nail? Yes, Miss A? Wow, a very painful yet unforgettable, ex unforgettable experience indeed. Okay, so class, learning on your own is good. But sometimes you cannot prevent the sudden accidents, right? Especially if you're still a beginner. That is why you need to be careful and know the techniques on how to drive a nail. But now, I see that some of you need some energizer. So here I have prepared a game for all of us. So, uh, are you ready? So here is the mechanics, okay? So first, guess the jumbled words prepared. Second, be ready and alert when responding God is good all the time. Or God is good. And then you will respond all the time by clapping your hands two times. So first, when I say, God is good, you say, or you will respond all the time by clapping your hands two times. And then when the teacher will say all the time, you will respond directly by saying, God is good. So while raising both of your hands upward, okay? So the students who cannot able to respond directly to the teacher will answer the first jumbled words. Is that clear? Okay, when I say God is good, you will respond all the time by clapping your hands two times. And when I say all the time, you will respond God is good by raising both of your hands upward. So it's very simple and easy. Alright? Okay. So here, the first jumble we have today. Are you ready? Okay. God is good. Oh, all the time. God is God is good. All right. So Miss D, can you answer the first jumbled words we have here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it nailing class? Oh, let's see. Yes, very good. Let's have a round of applause to Miss D. Okay, how about the second? Okay, guess, guess, guess. So ready? God is good. Okay, Miss B, you're not um, paying attention. So you will uh, guess the second jumbled words we have here. So what do you think is our second jumbled word? Mm-hmm. 
Is that a hammer? Okay, let's see. Yes, very good. It's a hammer. Okay, let's have number three. So, I put there a clue. It has two words. Okay, two words. Are you ready, class? Okay. That is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. Okay. So, what do you think is our number three, Mr. E? Mm hmm Is that a wood glue? Okay, let's see. Yes, very good. It's a wood glue. All right. So, let's have the last one. So, what do you think of number four class? Okay, ready? Are you ready? All right. God is good. All the time. God is good. Okay. Miss Let. Miss L, what do you think is number four? It's very easy. Mm -hmm. Is that a pencil? What do you think, class? Yes? All right, let's see. Okay, very good. It's a pencil. Very good. So here, class, I need you to know that the jumbled words that you basically uh, rearrange is something connected to our topic okay because these terms that you have guessed and mentioned earlier if you don't know uh will be encountering those words as we go along in our discussion okay all right so here let's first discuss about the various tools needed needed in nailing techniques so so class, I have a question. So what is a tool, by the way? Yes, Mr. Um, M? Mm-hmm, yes, you have a good idea. Okay, class, it is something that we can use in completing the task, right? So it's very important in the process of nailing, okay? All right, so first we have here the tools first we have the pencil and the tri square second the hammer third the nail set and lastly we have the hand drill all right so first let's let's discuss the pencil okay so here actually um, if we think about the regular pencil that we used to see every day, um, we don't have any idea, but the pencil that we use is just for writing, right? But did you know that it has different function or intended application? Mm -hmm. Like for example, the Mongol one, we have Mongol one, two, three, right? So Mongol one is used in creating a very dark heavy lines take note and mongol 2 it creates a dark line only and lastly the mongol 3 is responsible for marking fine and light line okay again mongol 1 is creating dark heavy lines mongol 2 is creating a dark line only and mongol 3 it is responsible for marking fine and light lines. So if you're wondering where should we um, use the Mongol one, ma'am, where can we use or when can we use the Mongol one, two, and three, ma'am? So for the information of everyone, we use Mongol one in creating border lines. So for example, um, I might give you or assign you to make a plan in your project in a short bond paper so in uh, i will let you have a uniform um set a uh, uniform format of the written project in a short bond paper so it's very important to put borders right so in creating a border lines we should use mongol one Okay, Mongol 1 is for border lines. And when we say Mongol 2, it is used in lettering. So, for example, you will put their 
share your name, the date, the subject teacher, uh, and the 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 sc or score or remarks. So, Mongol Sue is responsible for littering. All right? Did you get it? Okay. And the la last one we have Mongol Three. So for Mongol Three, it is responsible for creating shapes, drawings, or I. Uh, in some cases, if you want to draw your projects, uh, Mongol um, Mongol Three is responsible for that because it's very fine and light line only. Okay, do you understand? Okay. So here I need you to know that there is what we call a carpenter pencil. So what have you observed, Miss? E. How about the shape of the pencil? What can you say? Mm hmm. Thank you. So we can actually see it here that it is different from a regular pencil, right? That is round and hexagonal. And as you can see here, class, carpenter pencil is either elliptical or rectangular. So it is shaped like that to prevent from rolling away when the carpenter needs it okay and it is also easier to grip or hold due to its larger surface so if you rotate the pencil it has different function and it allows both thin and bold lines because the former are for quick precise line on smooth surfaces while the latter are used for rougher surfaces such as wood so notching the middle of the pencil lid will allow two parallel lines to be drawn simultaneously. And if you're wondering how to sharpen it, you can manually sharpen it with a knife or a carpenter sharpener or a carpenter pencil sharpener. So overall class in carpenter pencil, yes, this is basically a tool for making legible markings on a range of rough surfaces, such as wood, stone, or concrete. But take note that carpenter pencil or any kind of pencil is used for guidelines in planning, cutting, and sewing. So used in marking the line. Do you get it? Okay. And we also have here the tri-square. Okay. The tri-square. So I know all of you are familiar with it. So, can anyone read the definition um, presented here? Yes, Miss B. Okay, thank you. So, everyone, please take note that this tool is used in measuring the accuracy of a 90 degree right angle. So, it can be used on a surface to check its straightness, squareness, and flatness of the corners so as you can see here it has two main parts the stock which is made made from a timber or plastic and the blade made from a hardened and tempered steel which is make it resistant to damage and it can be a type of wood glass yes so again class it serves as a guide for pencil in marking lines of right angles or any flat square or edges okay so class pencil and tri square are both team up in preparation for driving two parts of joints because as what I said earlier pencil is one way of marking the desired spots for the nail to be drive and by the help of the tri square you can able to uniformly attach and have an exact angle needed to be achieved Although some experts don't need it, but for a beginner like us, these are some important tools needed in nailing techniques, okay? Alright, so we also have here the hammer. Okay, can we read Mr. Uh, N? Okay, thank you. So the most important tool in driving for us uh, driving is for driving the nail 
is the nail, the brads, and other fasteners, right? And we used hammer in driving it. So as you can see in the image class, it has many parts, okay? Namely, the head, the neck, the face, the pull, this is the ad's eye, the neck of the hammer, the claw, and the handle. Okay, is that uh, clear for you? So those are the different um, parts of the hammer. So as you can see, class, or observe, in some hammers, there are also two hammer faces. So it may be smooth or milled. Milled, uh, meaning the one that has a rough texture. Okay? Alright. So here, there are uh, lots of types of hammer, but then I will give you the claw hammer and the, the claw hammer and the mallet. So here first we have the curved claw hammer. So can anyone read this for me? Okay, yes, Mr. O. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. So as you can see here, class, let's have first the curved claw hammer, okay? So the curved claw hammer is used, commonly used for finished work. So, it provides better leverage for pulling nails. And also, we have the straight claw hammer. So, as you can see, it is used to pry boards apart and to split pieces of lumber. So, yes, the straight claw hammer is used for rough work, such as framing or concrete form of construction. So, it is very easy to to identify the two types of claw hammer class, right? Because as you can see, we can identify it based on their claw, all right? This, as you can see, it's curved and then the other one is straight. So for here, I have here some examples in action of the two types of claw hammers. As you can see on the left side, so here, the curved claw hammer, it is used, the person is pulling out the nail using curved claw hammer. While on the other side, as you can see, the person is splitting the wood using the straight claw hammer. See? So there's a difference between the two. So next, do you have any question about the two claw hammer? Alright, okay, let's proceed. So let's have here the ball pin hammer. So the ball pin hammer or also known as a machinist hammer, it is a type of pinning hammer used in metal working. So it has two heads, one flat and then the other is called the pin on, or the rounded. So take note of it, the ball pin is used in um, shaping metals, right? S right? See here, it is round in shape that is intended for shaping metal. So this one is intended for metal working. Do you understand? Okay. And next, we also have the cross pin hammer. So uh, what I mentioned earlier, I will just give to you uh, another type of hammer. The, we have, yes, the claw hammer. And next is the open hammer. And the third one is cross pin hammer so here in a cross pin hammer class i've included it here because i think uh you deserve to know this too because it can be also used in other types of woodworking or, me or metal working so uh let's go back so cross pin hammer is a blade that is perpendicular to the handle so the cross pin can be sharp so as you can see it's sharp and it's rounded flat, smooth, or textured. So a cross pin hammer can be used in metal working stone, uh, blacksmithing, or woodworking. So it is also applicable class in metal working, okay? All we need to take note of this is it's one, the blade of it is sharp and the, it has round and flat, smooth, or textured, um head okay 
It is also used in shaping metals or after blacksmithing any kinds of metals, um, we can use this one. All right? Do you understand? So just remember uh, the form or the look of these hammers, okay? All right. So next, we also have the mallet. So this is what I mean earlier. So wooden mallet, uh, there are two types of mallet, the wooden mallet and the rubber mallet. But first, let's discuss about um, the wooden mallet, okay? All right. So here in a wooden mallet, can anyone read this for me? All right. Okay, Mr. C. So here, a wooden mallet class is intended for um, wooden works. Because why? Do you have any idea um, what's the function or why do we need a wooden mallet in woodworking? So have you wondered why? Okay, because class, as you can see, it is easier to control, especially in striking a chisel. So with less force, it will not ruin either the surface of the wood or the partnered tool. Okay? So it is intended in woodworking. So next, we also have the rubber mallet. So as you can see, um, can anyone read this for me? All right, Miss B. Okay, thank you. So it is used, the rubber mallet class is used to bend and shape sheet metal. So it is a lightweight hammer tool with a head made of molded rubber or hard plastics and a wooden or fiberglass handle. So rub, rubber mallets are sometimes called soft mallets. Again, it is sometimes called a soft mallets. All right, did you understand? Okay, let's proceed. Let, next, we also have the nail set. Okay, can you read Mr. X? Thank you. So as you can see here, class, nail set are short tapered bars of steel, right? That serves as a companion to a hammer. So whenever you want to have a smoother surface with it, without any head of nails coming up, in just one dab of a putty, you can able to make the nails disappear or in preparing the nails to be dry. So for an easy penetration of a nail, you can set it with this tool. So first, leaving a small dot preparation, okay? Next, so that's um, the, the picture of a nail set. So that's the example. Next, you also have the handrail. So as you can see, um, you are all familiar with it. You usually see this uh, being used by some carpenters, right? So it can be equipped with drill bits and used to pre-drill holes. And other drill heads can be used to install or remove screws and bolts. So it is easier to use, especially when drilling holes in hard surfaces. So most handrails class are powered tools operated or um, nowadays and next I think we are all done with the uh, different types of tools let's proceed now to the nailing techniques okay so class there's more than um, uh, one way to hammer nail so there are several techniques that are commonly used with each suited to different application okay since uh, we already discussed about the tools, so let's get to know the techniques. So here, first, drive the nail squarely. So first class, I need you to take note or take consideration and the appropriate tools needed in nailing in driving the nail. So it is also important, class, that the size of the hammer matches the size of the nail. And when using a hammer to drive nail, so as you can see, um it should be grasped firmly near the end so for example i have here a hammer so it should be grasped firmly near the end of the handle so the hammer blows are delivered by a wrist and elbow motion rather 
than by moving the entire arm at the shoulder. So it is not necessary. For, but if you need to strike a very heavy blows, the full arm can be brought into use. But for some instances, especially when um, working with just um, easy, easy task um, or easy process of driving a nail, only wrist and elbow motion is used, okay? So the hammer must be held at such an angle that the face will strike the nail squarely. So if each blow does not meet the head squarely, so the nail will be bent, right? So you all experience driving a nail, right? If you cannot able to strike it to the nail squarely, the, um, the nail will be bent, okay? So here, as you can see class, on the left side, imagine a line running straight up the nail and through the middle of the hammer. So this ensures the actual face of the 90 degree to the nail head and only in this position is the hammer face perfectly aligned with the nail or hitting it squarely. So again, it's all about imagining a line running straight up the nail and through the middle of the hammer. So that's the first technique. Okay, do you understand? All right. So, second, we also have here drive finishing ho finishing nail almost home. So here you must tap the nail with the hammer until the nail can stand on its own in the wood, okay? Without without having to hold it. So hit the nail with the hammer until the head of the nail is about 1 inch from the wood surface. So to complete the operation, uh, set the nail using the nail set in order to prevent the area around the finished nail from becoming bruised or damaged. And, or if there is any part in the surface that is bulky to touch because of the nail head, you can actually use the nail set to tap its nail head for a smoother surface. Okay? So, here in this, in this technique, you just need or involve fewer strikes only so that the nail can stand on its own. So that's driving or drive finishing nail almost home. Is that clear? All right. Next, we also have apply pilot hole. So using a hand drill and use a smaller drill bit to drill a hole smaller than the actual gauge of the nail. It is also applicable for any hardwood okay so you can actually use a handle with a bigger drill bits since it can be replaceable if you are drilling a harder type of wood so it is also applicable in driving um the work near the end which prone to split or break and lastly the depth of hole not not to sacrifice the strength so hand drill are way more easier to use when applying a pilot hole okay did you understand all right so that's the third technique so here the fourth we have saturate the gauge with an oil so as you can see here class one interesting way to get nails hammered into hardwood easily is to lubricate them so if you're wondering what to use you can use a lip balm yes a beeswax or even a lubricating oil so put the lubrication somewhere conveniently close so you can still work quickly to get your nails in place okay so it's very important that you saturate the tools needed in the nailing process is that clear okay let's proceed to the fifth one applied apply staggered nailing so not only are nails staggered vertically in adjacent sheets of plywood they are staggered in the same sheet right so this is intended to minimize the possibility of framing lumbar rupture so what you see on the left side here uh, what you can see on the left side um that is uh that shows the stogger nails nailing near the end of the board okay 
and that is the correct one. And while on the right side, as you can see, this shows when placing the nail in a straight line and may split the board if you position the nails um, with the same position, right? As you can see, what happened is of uh, the wood, it split the board and it breaks or damage the, the joints that you used. So it's not applicable to position the nail at this uh, in the same line but in vertical line so this is the correct one the staggered nailing okay so you can see here and then, then the opposite so this is the correct one okay so that you cannot break your wood or the piece of the wood and also this one secures uh, the stronghold of the two joints being stick together all right so here in stronger nailing class also it is applicable in narrow surfaces or edges of the wood in order to prevent from splitting so here if you're wondering glue is not just for pasting any sheets of paper with each other class it's all uh it is also there is a, also a glue intended for the wood. So, uh, it is um, called the wood glue. Okay? Uh, is that clear? So, that's the, the fifth technique. Again, so, in staggered nailing, you position it oppositely. Oppositely in a vertical line. And also you need to also apply a wood loaf not to split the sheets or in order for it to become stable when driving the the nail so last but not the least we have here apply clinching so apply clinching glass is a common place or technique in the past so this is less often employed today but a clinch or a uh, a clinch nail is driven through the pieces being joined and the protruding tip is bent and nail flush for extra holding power. So button doors were traditionally made using this technique leading to the cliche that as a door nail. You can also see this um, before they use this as their door nail. Yes, this type of technique. But it is often or less often employed today. So that is the last technique that we will have today. So class, now let's have an activity. Don't worry because it's just simple and easy. So activity time. So let's have the Pinoy Henyu time, okay? So it's just simple. You just need to group yourselves into 10 members. And each group will have 5 items to guess. So, two points for every correct item, and the first two pairs will try to figure out the first picture that will appear in the screen, okay? And one person will try to describe the image, and the other one will help him or her guess the picture by responding yes, no, or maybe. And after successfully guess the word, the next two person of the group turns next. So on and so forth. And here, the twist here is one can pass the item if you don't know the answer. But th that only means that you cannot able to try again. And you missed, for, uh, you missed one point for the group to have a perfect score. So is that clear? So another, the shortest time will be given additional points. So are you ready? Okay, group yourselves into 10, uh, 10 members. All right, I think all of you are ready. So are you ready? So here, identify the tools being presented on the screen. So the first two pairs will go here. So the first one, we have this tool. Is that your final answer? Okay, let's see if it is a set, uh, a nail set. Very good! One point for the group. Next! Alright! Okay! 
Is it a carpenter pencil class? Let's see. Very good. Two points for the group. Wow, this group is very, very fast. Is that a bullpen hammer? Yes, it's a bullpen hammer. Very good. What's this? Mm -hmm. Is that a wooden mallet? Yes, very good. It's a wooden mallet. What do you think is it? Cheer for your members class. Is it a straight glow hammer? Yes, it's a straight glow hammer. One point. What's this? Yes, very good. It's a tri square. Another point for the team. Mm hmm. Yes, it's a hand drill. All right, let's see if it's a rubber mallet. Very good. Another point for the team. Uh, what do you think? Yes, it's a cross pin hammer. And the last one. Okay, it's a curved glow hammer. All right, very good. So the shortest time goes to. Da -da -da -da. All right, goes for the team A. Let's have a round of applause to all of us. Okay, I can see that all of you learned from my discussion today because all of you didn't miss any item here that is being presented on the screen very good so additional points for team a because they have the shortest time in this activity okay so i can you see everyone mm -hmm. so here i have here your application so choose the best nailing technique in the statement you write only the letter of your answer in a one per sheet of paper only you can write it in a one four sheet of paper. Okay? So are you done in number one? How about number two? Okay. So that's all for um, the, the extra activity that we will have today. So for you class, do you have any questions um, regarding our discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, since you have no questions, I will have, a, uh, I have some questions that you will answer today okay so for you class why is it important to use appropriate tools in carpentry anyone yes miss b okay very good yes it's important because it makes your work easy and fast right and it also ensures the safety of the users so you can able to do your project nicely and firmly right okay second class so what is the importance of knowing the basic nailing techniques yes miss d yes very good so it is an advantage that you already know the techniques that those unknowns making your task becomes easy because experience also encompasses acquiring knowledge making you very skill skillful in the particular area okay so here is the real activity for today okay so this assessment is good for um i think 10 minutes only okay are you done so pass your papers in the front collectors first row first row will collect the papers pass it to me okay 10 9 eight seven six five four three two one okay very good so class don't worry because i'll be sending you my powerpoint presentation in our group chat so after our meeting all right okay so don't forget to consider here i uh, we also have the assignment the deadline is next week so can you research at least five different types of nail and each type must include image, characteristic, and uses. So put it in a long size of one paper and also don't forget our scoring rubric, okay? Because I will um, base here the scores if you deserve a 50 points, okay? So now I'll be leaving you 
with a coat. Um, start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible. And suddenly, you are doing the impossible by Francis Abbasesi. So, to finally end our meeting, may I request the prayer leader to kindly lead the closing prayer. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Class, uh, that's all for today. I hope you learned something and uh, thank you for participating and listening. That's all for today. Goodbye and God bless. Keep safe. You can now leave the room.